Hello everyone, I'm David Aksun, final year PhD student in EPFS. Today, I will be talking about evaluation of in cache line logging with interobtained persistent memory. The work that I'm presenting today is not previously published. Earlier version of this work was published in ASPROS 2019 in collaboration with Nachshon Cohen, Kiraravni, and James Lewis. This talk builds on that work. I will refer to the entire idea shortly as in cache line logging. I would like to extend my gratitude to Inter for providing me with the opportunity to access their servers equipped with Interobtain. So what is the practical application for persistent memory? Persistent memory is fast, has high capacity, and is byte addressable. It can take an existing data structure and store it in persistent memory. Then we can operate on the data structure that is stored in the persistent memory directly. However, the processor caches are volatile, and if a power failure occurs, the data structure can be in an inconsistent state after recovery. We need to add a crash consistency mechanism to the data structure for correct recovery after restart. We had a good idea to build fast durable data structure. We provided in cache line logging as a crash consistency mechanism for building durable data structure. In cache line logging is an approach for an expert library developer to build durable data structure by avoiding explicit cache line writeback in the fast part of the application. The data structure concretely resides in the persistent memory and the in cache line approach provides crash consistency for the data structure. We published in cache line logging in ASPROS and we were proud of the contributions in our work. While working on the project, we didn't have access to any obtained devices. Similar to the previously published work, we use software simulation theory to in cache line logging idea. Later, we had access to the rear inter obtained persistent memory devices. We went back and revisited our idea by using the rear hardware for evaluation. We reran our experiments on the rear machine and the results were surprisingly different. This talk is about why our measurements are different when running the experiments on Optane and why our reasoning at the time seemed plausible. Optane devices are great and we have waited so long for these devices to come to the scene. However, Optane in its current form is still slower and has limited bandwidth compared to DRAM. There is a very known saying, you get what you measure. In our simulation, we allow the race to be introduced after an s operation to model the cost of cache line pressure. Other papers also use the same simulation technique. We built an implementation that optimized the number of pressure, which is what the simulation focused on. However, our implementation put the data structure in persistent memory, so we did a large number of reads and writes to the persistent memory which had elevated costs when running on Optane. As researchers, we should be open to reconsider our previously published ideas and talk about their feasibility. Optane devices will be faster in the future and will improve in many ways. However, Optane in its current form is already being deployed in data center and is commercially available. In this talk, I'm taking in cache line logging as a substitute for any crash consistency mechanism that does a lot of read and write to persistent memory. We believe that putting a data structure on Optane and directly accessing the data structure is not a good idea because the application has to pay the cost of accessing the data structure on Optane. On top of this cost, the application also has to pay an extra performance overhead coming from the crash consistency mechanism. 
In the ASPROS paper, we reported the overhead of adding the Inkelstein Rogen crash consistency mechanism to the mastery vapor structure. The reported overhead varied between 6 to 15 percent across YCSB workloads without any break. We also reported the change in throughput when we introduced additional drag after an expense operation to model the effect of cash grind pressure. For YCSB-A, even with an added latency of one microsecond, the performance of in cash grind working decreased by 4% for the uniform workload and 6% for the Ziffian workload. To sum up, the overhead of in cash grind working was reasonably low, and we had an implementation that was optimized for cash grind pressure. For this talk, I'm using the mass three data structure for evaluation, which is a combination of the trust three and try. The figure presents the throughput of write intensive YCSV workloads for both baseline mass three and in cache line logging approach. We use uniform access pattern to model random accesses and zip PM to model popular, popular key accesses. There are 20 million initial keys and the operations are done by eight worker threads. In the figure, we have baseline mastery and the in-cash line logging approach. The y-axis depicts the throughput. In-cash line logging has the highest overhead in YCSB-A write intensive workloads as modifications use in-cash line logging extensively. In the figure, the slowdown of in cash line working is 15% for the uniform workload and 10% for the Ziffian workload. Two similar overheads also hold for rear hardware. Now we can talk about the results in a completely different machine, which is equipped with Optane. How does Optane have an effect on the results? For now, Let's focus on the YCSB-A write intensive results where the overhead of in-cache line working is the greatest. Any figure presented from onwards will not have any added latency. The y-axis shows the throughput of in-cache line working normalized to baseline mastery. In the figure that I'm presenting for both baseline mastery and in-cache line working, the allocations for the node structures and the value buffer are done over an MF region. The node structures and the value buffers of MF3 can either be in Optane or DRAM. So, baseline MF3 can either use Optane or DRAM. Before diving into the Optane measurement, I want to pose a few questions to the viewer. Which device did we use to place the node structures and the value buffers of MF3 for this figure? Does the baseline MF3 use DRAM? or obtain for <laughs> node and value buffer placement. Similarly, does in cash line logging use DRAM or obtain for node and value buffer placement? Try to guess it. If you guess DRAM for both, congratulations. I assume it was not a hard guess. The slowdown of in cash line logging is 18% for the uniform access pattern and 17% for the Zipkin access pattern. The current machine is different compared to the one used in ASPROS. However, the results are within the expected performance range. Now, I'm presenting a similar figure compared to the one from the previous slide. The only difference is the placement. Instead of making you guess, let me tell you that both baseline mastery and in cash grind logging use Optane. The slowdown of in cash line logging is 18% for the uniform access pattern and 20% for the Zipian access pattern. The results are very similar to the previous figure's pattern with a minor performance degradation in Zipian. The overhead of in cash line logging is almost insensitive to obtain placement. It seems in cash line logging maintains a similar throughput degradation when used with obtain. The results were consistently on obtain. So we can just investigate the overheads in detail and optimize the work as much as possible for the new obtain device. Later, after everything is perfect, we can apply 
the idea across many more data structures and data center applications, and we can deploy it. So are we almost done? As expected, I wouldn't be giving the talk if these two figures were sufficient by itself. But if we ask a simple question, what is the overhead of using in cache line logging running on Optane compared to baseline mastery running on DRAM? I'm again presenting a similar figure to the one used in the previous slide. The only difference is the placement. As you can see, the gap is huge. And from a runtime performance perspective, almost irreconcilable. The slowdown of in-cache line logging is 64% for the uniform access pattern and 51% for the ZPN access pattern. If we just report the slowdown with respect to obtained placement, the overhead of introducing in-cache line logging is not much and in-cache line logging is mostly insensitive. However, if we compare DRAM measurements with obtained measurements, we get an entirely different picture. The reason this figure is important is due to the opportunity cost of not using DRAM. In cache line logging requires the data structure to be in the persistent memory, and all the updates to the data structure has to be in place updates. By using in cache line logging, we are paying the cost of using the crash consistency mechanism. By using Optane, we are paying the cost of having an inter-persistent memory data structure. Here, we can see that the majority of the cost is from using Optane. Let's forget about in-cache line logging for a second and consider baseline mastery. What is the cost of persisting baseline mastery on Optane? The red bar represents the normalized throughput for storing the nodes and the value buffers in Optane for baseline mastery. The slowdown of mastery on Optane is 56% for the uniform access pattern and 38% for the ZPN access pattern. ZPN workload can perform better due to locality. However, there is a huge performance hit when using Optane only. The main message of the figure is that mastery executes much slower than running on Optane compared to DRAM. Let's investigate the effects of using Optane further by examining the program under VTune for baseline mastery, running on DRAM and on Optane for the YCSKA uniform workload. I'm presenting the measurements from a portion of the workload execution. In general, the increase in CPU time is due to memory accesses. The figures on the left and the right depict the top four functions that consume CPU time for both DRAM and Optane cases. For example, the compare function, which does key comparison, or the Rovis marker function, which reads the timestamp from the value buffer, take more time than running on Optane. Mastery has optimistic concurrency for reads and uses logs for writes. The logs are implemented within the node structure in a in good fashion, the majority of the overhead comes from the Saber annotated function, which is used to be the Saber version value for a given node. The Saber annotated function can lead to a scheme group as well. The function is also frequently called in the traversal part of mastery and heavily relies on access to memory. In the measure portion of the execution, the bandwidth measurements clearly indicate the bottleneck. The right bandwidth of Optane is between half and a quarter of DRAM bandwidth, while the read bandwidth is almost a half of DRAM bandwidth. The main bottleneck is using Optane. In the rest of the talk, I will provide more evaluation for the in-cache line logging idea running on Optane. However, first, I will provide an overview of the in-cache line logging idea and how the idea fits well with the simulation evaluation approach to better understand the results and to reason about the overhead. Then I will provide the rest of the evaluation and investigate how the slowness of Optane imposes constraints for design ideas that operate directly on the data structure stored in persistent memory. 
He also implemented a solution that addresses the weaknesses of the in-cash networking idea, which also takes the bandwidth limitations of obtaining into account. However, I will leave the solution for another talk. I will now present the in-cash networking idea. In-cash networking idea is a method to be used as a tool for expert library builders. In-cash networking addresses both the weaknesses of traditional checkpointing and transactional underwriting. In-cash networking consists of two components. The first one is fine-grained checkpointing, which relies on the periodic persistence idea from the very hash map. The second one is using a role within a cash line, which is the novel contribution. Using both components, each in cash line login can achieve zero explicit writebacks in the fast set of the data structure. In cash line login divides the program execution into fine grained epochs of 64 milliseconds. At the start of an epoch, Checkpointing persists the entire cache hierarchy using writeback invalidate instruction. Checkpointing leads to 5.8% overhead in octane. For checkpointing, there is not a separate copy of the data structure to buffer the modifications. The data structure is stored directly in the persistent memory. Persisting the entire cache hierarchy at the end of an epoch ensures that all the modifications to the data structure will be propagated from the caches to the delivered data structure stored in the persistent memory. That is why, if a power failure occurs during an epoch, the application needs to roll back the modifications done in a crashed epoch. Unlike traditional checkpointing, which relies on keeping track of 30 pages, we can use an undo roll to roll back the state. The undo roll has to be in persistent memory too. The time spent on checkpointing is bounded by the number of the cache kind, which is bounded by the cache size. Fine grained checkpointing is sufficient when combined uh, with an undo roll. However, it does not lead to optimal runtime performance. The problem is the undo roll. Any in place update has to be preceded by a call to the undo row to save the old value. For crash consistency, undo row has to be consistent before any update to the data structure. To provide crash consistency, undo row relies on expensive explicit cache line writeback. For x86, the explicit cache line writeback usually involves cache line crash instructions followed by a fan. Using explicit cache line writeback, the undo row can crash the dirty cache lines that need to be persistent and be in a consistent state. The writebacks require a full memory round trip time, and modifications are usually done in the fast set of the application. Waiting for persistent memory in the fast set of the application can lead to performance degradation. Even if you know, all know how logging works, let me quickly demonstrate how traditional undo logging works, in this case, to modify the cash line logging idea. I will use the values array of a B plus 3 node, which fits the single cash line. The application has to log the old value and then later modify the data structure. In the example, the application generates a log entry with value 7. After creating the log, it is necessary to write back the dirty cache lines of the row for crash consistency. This operation makes the log entry visible in the persistent memory. In the example, the log entry containing the value 7 for key 5 is made visible in the persistent memory. Finally, the application can continue mutating the data structure. In the example, the value 7 for key 5 is replaced with value 6. In cache line logging idea, eliminates the explicit cache line writebacks from the fast part of the application. Instead of having an external undo row, the idea for the in cache line logging is to simply put the row inside the cache line that is being modified and avoid waiting for a full persistent memory round trip time. For example, in cache line row can be a row of eight bytes foreign from the end of the cache line. Instead of using an external row, in cache line row uses the storing state for logging the value. The new algorithm is as follows. 
the value is log to the in cash kind log. In the example, the value 745 is stored in the in cash kind log. The application then continue mutating the data structure. In the example, the value 7 is replaced with value 6. The main reason that in cash line logging can avoid explicit cash line writebacks in the first path is that the modification is done to the same cash line. The only requirement for the application is to ensure that the in cash line log is validly written before doing a modification to the data structure. The ordering of writes can be done using a release fence, which introduces a happens before relation between the writes and has no cost on x86 architecture. There are two possible states that a cache gun can be in in the persistent memory at the time of power failure. The first possible state is that the modifications are not propagated to the persistent memory, so the state of the cache gun in the persistent memory has not changed. Therefore, recovery is unnecessary after a power failure. For example, the value of T5 is not modified, and it has the same value in the beginning of the state. The second possible state is that the modifications get propagated to the persistent memory. After power failure, the application can use the in-cache line log to restore the state of the cache line back to the initial value in the epoch. For the example case, since T5's value is 7, is already logged in the in cache line log, the application can roll back the value of 7. The main issue for using an in cache line log is the size of the log. Not all the operations done to a cache line can be stored within the in cache line log. Let's look at the example. We want to do more put operations to other locations within the cache line. The in cache line log does not have the capacity to keep track of all the changes. One possible solution is to increase the size of the in cache line log, which consumes space within a cache line and can alter the characteristics of the application significantly. Since our design uses periodic checkpoints, we can fall back to using an external under log. For operations that cannot be covered by the in cache line log, the crash consistency mechanism falls back to using an external under log. The external random log uses node priority for logging. If an in-cache kind log is not sufficient to keep track of multiple modifications, the entire node is logged using an external random log. In the example, the node is logged entirely. The main benefit of node priority is that all the succeeding operations within the epoch to the node do not need to be logged as the log entry for the node contains sufficient information for recovery. However, using the external undo log has a cost. We still have to pay the cost of logging the node one per report. Sum up, in cache line logging idea can support zero explicit cache line writebacks in the fast part of the data structure. Avoiding waiting for a full memory run trip time is very useful, even for evaluation under Octane. In cache line logging is a good tool to have when working on software for persistent memory to improve runtime performance. The main issue is the placement cost of using Octane. In cache line logging idea, it's heavily dependent on using persistent memory as the crash consistency mechanism supports in place updates. Any data structure using in cache line logging has to be on Octane. On top of this, the external under log is also on obtain. However, obtain is slow. Therefore, the throughput degradation due to obtain will be the main bottleneck, which is unavoidable. These are the settings of the server equipped with obtain, which we use for evaluation. We evaluate the system on a single socket by cleaning the threads and disabling the turbo boost. Setting up the system to use NVM is quite straightforward. We use IP and CTR to set the app direct mode. We use ND CTR to create the persistent memory device, interleaving six ND DIM uh, for a socket. Then we install a fire system and use the direct access feature to avoid using the page cache and access persistent memory directly using roads and stores. 
For the rest of the evaluation, I will keep the same style by presenting two versions of math three, where the placement can either be on the RAM or of them. For evaluation, we use YCSD workload with uniform and ZPM distribution. The current evaluation does not use any artificial latencies. Unless stated otherwise, we use 20 million keys to pre-populate the data structure and eight worker threads to perform the operation. Now I'm going to present different YCSP workflows. First, I will show the YCSP A in a more compact way. As we have seen before, the slowdown of in cash line working uh, with Optane is 51% to 64%, as shown in the red bar. Sadly, the upfront cost of using Optane already reached to 38 to 66% slowdown as shown in the green bar. YCSV A is write intensive, which does 50% write and 50% read. So what happens if we reduce the rate of writes? Do we also pay a cost for using opt-in in read-only workflows? The answer is sadly yes. Now I'm going to show a read-only workflow figure. The figure presents the YCSC C workloads, which does 100% read. The upfront cost of using Optin for baseline mastery is 26 to 46%, as shown in the green bar. While the ZPN workload has better locality, just doing reads lead to almost 50% cost for the uniform case. This is baseline mastery, so there is no logging. There are no cache line crashes. There's no crash consistency mechanism. However, still the application has to pay an enormous cost for even read-only workloads. In cache line logging has an inherent cost due to changes in the in -cache, uh, cache line design and periodic checkpoints, which is unavoidable. So adding in cache line logging on top of the baseline mastery further introduces an extra cost as well. The slowdown of using in cash line logging uh, with Optane is 36 to 54% as shown in the red bar. Again, in a read on read workload, the in cash line log is not used and the cost of using Optane is great. For the cost of using Optane, we expect similar behavior compared to the previous slide, uh, two previous slides, if you mix read and write. Now I'm going to show YCSP B, which is sort of a mix of both YCSP A and YCSP C. YCSP B is read intensive, but also does write, which is 5% write and 95% read. We expect the slowdown to be impacted mostly by Optane, and as expected, the cost of using Optane is 27 to 48% as shown in the green bar. Then we add the in cash line working on top of baseline mastery. The slowdown increases to 38 to 56% as shown in the red bar. We can see the limitations for both the write and the read bandwidth in YCSC ABC experiments. The cost of accessing persistent memory dominates the cost of using the crash consistency mechanism. Accessing the data structure directly stored in persistent memory is not feasible. We can look at the YCSP E experiments and observe that the same principle still holds. YCSP does a lot of scan operation, which is 95% of all operation, and does a small amount of write, which is 5% of all operation. In mastery, the scan operations are slower compared to normal and read uh, and write, and return a range of values. We can see by looking at the green, uh, green bars that the overhead of using uh, Optane for the baseline mastery is 21 to 36%, which is still a lot just for using Optane. We want to see the scalability of just using Optane and observe the limits of the bandwidth that can be imposed by the underlying memory. Therefore, we increase the number of threads and examine the proof. The figure shows the scalability of baseline mastery approach on Optane machine using YCSP A uniform workload. 
at 24 grads, the performance slowdown of baseline mastery with Optane increases up to 67% as shown in the red bar. Again, there's no added crash consistency mechanism and the overhead is just enormous. When we add crash consistency mechanism, we get a further slowdown, which increases the slowdown up to 73% for in-cash grind working using Optane uh, for 24 threads. The limitations in the bandwidth of Optane has a degrading effect for the scalability of the data structure. By just placing the data structure on Optane, we severely impose throughput limitations. Optane is a slower device with a lower read write bandwidth compared to DRAM. The measurements done using Optane are not the end of the world. Technology keeps improving, and we hope that Optane's bandwidth will improve in the future. However, the limitations on the read and write bandwidth of Optane are critical for runtime performance. So avoid operating on data structures directly in persistent memory, as it is not a good idea at the moment. Throughout the talk, we showed the, how optimizing for simulation can be misleading, as it can lead to optimizations that we favor the simulation. The characteristics of the simulation can ignore the important characteristics of the real hardware. For your question, you can contact me in the given email address below. Thank you for listening.